Hey everybody, so welcome to another episode of the Site Owner Academy. These have become episodes now. Everyone in the Site Owner Academy, you know, we do these weekly meetings for site owners. It's like a mastermind. And there's also a WhatsApp group and all kinds of things. So Chris, you want to load the, the slides? Uh, no, I can't see anything. So there's a WhatsApp group and all kinds of things. Uh, in the Site Owner Academy. And we also give a, a package deal for people interested in six months of our services, as well as uh, lifetime access to the Site Owner Academy. So we're gonna talk about these kind of things in the Site Owner Academy. Every week we have a different topic. Every week we network, we brainstorm with one another. Um, so yeah, with that being said, Let's get to the slides. So this week's topic, we're doing PI and CRC fee justification on a clinical research budget. So right up Chris's alley, actually. Uh, you know, this is important stuff because especially now during COVID and this pandemic, and there's all kinds of things that we need to be adding as sites to our budgets. And uh, in this particular slideshow, we're going to be talking about the PI and the CRC fee, which doesn't have anything to do with COVID really, but I just brought up that example because there are lots of things that sites generally don't think about yeah. when they're negotiating budgets. What do you think about that, Chris? Yeah, especially research naive sites. They don't, yes. they don't know what they can ask for. That's correct. So yeah, next slide, let's see uh, how it looks here. So hidden research expenses. So there are hidden research expenses which do not appear in the schedule of assessments. Uh, can you explain this, Chris? So one of those hidden expenses are the additional work that the CRC and PI need to perform uh, during the course of a trial. Um, that specifically would be something outside of the schedule of events. But there's other things as well, like startup activities. Obviously, those are not going to be in the schedule of assessment. Um, and you need to receive some compensation of the site for those activities. And there's others as well. Okay, so PIs and clinical research coordinators typically spend time and resources covering these hidden costs. So what does that mean? What is the what is Carlos? What do we mean by this? Because we Carlos created these slides from one of our videos. Right. So there's additional workload that's required of a PI or a coordinator. Um, that's not covered in the schedule of assessment. Um, phone calls with, with patients, uh, SAEs that occur. Although, yeah, oftentimes you will, not often, but occasionally you will see SAEs in the schedule of assessment. So they really don't compensate the site for that. Um, they, they tend to try and compensate the site for an SAE at the same rate as an AE, which there's a lot more work involved for an SAE. Um, so yeah, there's there's many aspects to to research that are outside the realm of the schedule of assessment. You know, those incorporate the known items that will occur at each visit. But again, there's things outside of each visit that must be done oftentimes. Conversations with the CRE, CRA, emails, uh, back and forth between you know who knows project manager, CRA, medical monitor. There's all kinds of aspects of research that occur that are not covered in the schedule of assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're exactly right. And then sites should consider requesting a PI and CRC fee that is included in the budget. So when you request this, Chris, what do you typically get back from the sponsor if it's not included? PI well, and CRC fee. So I would say 75% of the time in the study budgets, these study budgets already come with this fee incorporated. Um, and again, 25% of the time it does not. So you already know that they're, they're going to pay the site for this additional fee, both for the PI and CRC. Um, and, and occasionally you'll see something that's very fair, right? For these fees. Um, typically I think a fair request for a PI fee is about 220 and a coordinator fee about 180. Um, per study visit, um, and I do see that occasionally from a sponsor. 
Mm-hmm. But generally, what you're going to see from the sponsor is something like maybe 160 for the PI and 140 for the coordinator. That's a little bit more common, I think. Um, and then you have to negotiate upwards of that. Now, for the 25% of the time that you see no fee, I would say maybe about a third of the time you can get them to pay you a, a fee for those two things. Okay. Two and then of the we. Time really well. We have a um, a comment from one of the attendees. So they're saying other hidden costs are monitoring visits by phone and monitoring the diaries, the patient diaries. Uh, so those are hidden costs. You know that sites do need to. I mean, there's a lot of other hidden costs too, especially if we throw in COVID into this. You know, and we've done webinars on that uh, in the past, but specifically for PI and CRC fee. Because you're asked often to justify, okay, well, what what exactly is the justification for a PI fee? Because isn't a PI's job to be a PI, and isn't a CRC's job to be a CRC? So how do you answer that rebuttal, Chris? And that is a rebuttal you will receive. Um, and then I have, I have some already um, uh, pre-worded information for the sponsor of why this should be something that they compensate for. And it, it incorporates everything we've discussed, right? All these additional activities that must be done. And again, I would say two thirds of the time I'll receive a response of, well, that's just part of doing research. Um, and then a third of the time they will then incorporate that fee into the budget. So when I receive that's just part of doing research, I really don't know what to say after that. So how, is that when you kind of feel like you hit a dead end? Yes, very much so. Because it's either at that point you have what? Well, we need to be incorporate. We need this to be incorporated into the budget, or we're not interested in doing stuff. Okay. So if they're not going to accept the justification that's been provided, what what is your recourse at that point? Right? Either pay us or we'll forget about it. Right. Okay. All right, so next slide. These are actually, a, this is a good topic. So one of the biggest justifications for a PI fee is that research patients require more attention from PIs. Is this a valid uh, justification in your opinion? My opinion, no. Um, I mean, for an SAE, sure. Um, but I, for the most part, the time consumption for a PI or other activity, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, like the person had, had, uh, chatted, um, dealing with CRAs, um, dealing with, say, and there's things that, that you may ask for, court, uh, compensation for that you're kind of double billing. For example, when there's, a, when there's an amendment to a protocol, that takes a lot of PI time. Um, Oftentimes, though, they pay you for that, right, and request uh, fees um, for protocol amendments. But if they're not, then, of course, that's taking a lot of PI time as well. You know, just things of this nature. There's a lot of well, a lot more than I want to go into that's required of a PI in research outside of the schedule of the document. Yeah. But I wouldn't say specifically it's patient time, time with the patient. So we got another question comment. So they're saying about the justification. So this is the first time I've heard of this. Have you? It's he's saying you have to get you have to have justification memo for the sponsor to get something approved if it's out of the realm. They call it a justification memo internally, well, it seems like. So I'm not sure exactly what's meant by that, but so what I will send to them is um, something on letterhead from the site, oftentimes signed by the site, stating that this is what we're requesting and this is what, justification. Um, but that I, might be the same thing that this person's uh, talking about. I'm not sure. Yes, they're um, saying yes. Okay, yeah. So um, that doesn't always work, though. I'm not, like I'm saying, when it doesn't work, you really are left with no other recourse. You and, and I've done this, I've said to them, well, we, you have to pay this or we're not interested in doing a study. And um, that was a study I was okay with losing, one of the sites that Dan and I own. Um, and we did lose the study. 
Yeah, but that was one we were willing to lose. Right. That was more of an uh, experiment to see if we can, how far we can push a budget. Yep. And, uh, uh, which, by the way, is yeah. not a bad strategy for sites that are, you know, not really wanting to do a study. I mean, try to test the limits. Try to improve your negotiating uh, skills. You know, it's not it's not a guarantee that it's going to work on every sponsor you use those strategies with, but you never know. Yep. And what I would recommend if you're going to utilize this strategy is when already this, the budget is well under fair market value, which it wasn't in the case where I did try it. Um, so that might be a bad representative or bad data to apply to all sponsors because they're already well under fair market value. Um, if this was more in line or more, a more reasonable sponsor might be willing, if you make that threat, you know, we're not going to do the study unless we get compensated for this. They might be mm -hmm. more willing to consider it then. I don't know. I've never tried it with something that's reasonable. It's a good question. Do you think you will lose that study, that sponsor for future studies if you do this? I think so. Yeah. So you got to be strategic with the sponsor as well. Don't do it with the, one of the big ones, you know? Yeah. I, I, I've really over the last maybe two years come to the opinion that it's a little better to take a little less money than you could probably get just so that you build a decent relationship with that sponsor. You know, a larger sponsor, it's worth taking a little less money. Right. You know, as long as it's still in reasonably fair money, right, as long as you're within the realm of fair, um, I think it's okay to take that when you could actually probably get a little more and get it done quickly, the contract negotiation, so they're happy with that and they're moving along. And they don't, they're not left with a bad opinion of your site. I don't know if I'm making this clear or not, but... Yeah. I feel like I'm mumbling. No, well, you're not. Um, another comment. So I've had some studies with the sites when the sites have banded together and asked for more. So they had to do an amendment and change that with regards to screen fails, for example. So, yeah, exactly. That's one of the benefits of being part of a site network like we have with DSCS. I mean, when Chris negotiates a budget for a site in our site network, Basically, all the sites in our site network that are doing that study are going to get a similar budget, more or less. Yep. So, you know, that's the benefit of doing these uh, site networks um, is you can kind of share intel and kind of know what's going on. Uh, okay, good. So what are we still on this slide or we're moving on to the next slide? Next slide. So a PI may have to follow patients closely after an AE or SAE, spend time assessing labs, conducting extensive clinical assessments, or spending time talking to monitors. Uh, now, as a, spon as a sponsor, you know, I can play devil's advocate and say, okay, well, that's part of being a PI. What do you mean by this, Chris? And then you would send them a justification memo? Yep. And what would the justification memo basically state on there? Is it just an email or like a, something like a note that you're writing? So it's on a Word document, of course. And it, mm. it contains the left site letterhead. Um, and again, oftentimes it's signed. <clears throat> so, and it contains more than just what's covered here in the first bullet point. More items that are required of the PI in the time. You can usually get it after you've negotiated the budget that way. Adjudication is a hidden fee. So if they have SAEs, we ask for a fee. Yeah. And we interviewed uh, someone from Bioclinica about it, adjudication. And, uh, you know, that does take some of the PI's time uh, when it comes to SAEs and things like that. So exactly right. Uh, sites should negotiate a PI fee in their budget in order to recover these costs, which may not be reflected in the schedule of events. That's uh, exactly right. It's kind of what we've discussed already. I mean, this is a complicated topic. Mm, yes, it is. It's complicated because you can, you. I mean, we've been in this business for, you know, I've been doing this since 2005. I used to negotiate every single contract and budget up until about 2012. 2013, I think, when you took over negotiating the budgets. 
Yep. So, you know, I'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to budgets, but I talk to you enough about certain exceptions to kind of understand what's still going on. Uh, but basically every budget you negotiate is going to be different. You're going to have a different story. I mean, they're the same, but different, if that makes sense. So you kind of, this is one of those things where you kind of have to do it to understand. Yeah, and I guess uh, probably the best way to relate this would be buying a used car. So every used car lot is going to be different, right? On, on what maybe they'll let the car go for, their approach to negotiating this car, you know, the price on this car. Um, same with the sponsor. Everybody's handling it a little differently. CRCs have a highly demanding and difficult job, which is complicated by some of the demands from sponsors, monitors, vendors, and patients. There's no question about this. People don't really understand what CRCs do, even in this industry. I mean, you have to be at the site level to truly understand what a coordinator in a private uh, clinic does. I'm not talking about academic medical centers, although they're busy there too, but I'm talking about these private sites. Right, like these coordinators are doing literally everything from scheduling patient visits, entering data, drawing blood, processing labs. Sometimes they're doing the budgets too. I mean, they're doing literally everything, right? So there are lots of hidden CRC fees, communicating with monitors, communicating with vendors, doing all the trainings for the different vendors. Those are all, and you can get some of that in the startup cost. I mean, it depends. You have to know where to ask for these things. So making sure these demands are met involves time, which effectively has a cost for the site. Time is money. CRC time is money for sure. Uh, one of the members, one of the attendees is saying they used to sell cars. Uh, and they're asking if you did the same thing, Chris. I did for about six months when I was very young. Wow. So I don't know how they knew that about you, but they, they can tell based on how you're talking and negotiating. We got one more slide. Let's go through this, and then we'll end the recording so we can talk uh, network amongst site owners. Uh, final slide, Chris. Take it away. Former car salesman, Chris Sauber. Yeah, haha. Uh -huh. That the uh, coordinators must dedicate additional time to patients by following up with labs, reminding and rescheduling patient visits. Absolutely. Um, this is certainly a task the CRC must do. Um, and again, typically not, uh, typically not addressed in the schedule of activities or the initial budget. Um, unless, of course, they have the CRC fee there, which does, uh, account for those, these activities. Uh, additional time is also spent sending, uh, sending emails talking to monitors, vendors, or even scanning documents from electronic file master file. Again, all true, and all, again, covered under the CRC fee. If not offered, then this is why you're requesting a CRC fee, is because of these additional tasks that are not covered on scheduled assessment. Uh, requesting a CRC fee can be justified as a way to compensate sites for some of that time loss. Yep. As we've been discussing uh, for most of this uh, presentation. Yep, and we joke, but... The, one of the attendees said, one of the best tools I learned for doing budgets is selling cars. So you're not the only one, Chris, out there when you were in your teen, uh, teenage years probably well, selling teen, cars. Early, very early boy. Very good. So thank you very much. Let's uh, Hopefully you guys learned something from the hidden PI and CRC justifications and contracts and budgets. We can end the recording, and now we can get to the networking amongst the site owners.